gentlemen, Ambassador, thank you so much for talking to Voice of America. Very pleased to be with you. Thank you. Seven leading AI companies made eight promises about what they would do with their technology. Can you unpack for us what do these commitments actually mean? Yes, I think it's really important that we remember that our North Star, as we think about governance of this new tech frontier of artificial intelligence, our North Star ought to be preserving our innovative edge uh, and ensuring that we can continue to maintain a global leadership position in the development of robust AI tools. Because the upside to solve shared challenges around the world is so immense. And so that's why the Biden administration started with voluntary commitments from these seven leading companies. Voluntary because by their definition, these commitments don't stifle innovation. And second, voluntary because they allow us to move quickly. This isn't the end of the governance regime, this is the beginning. So these commitments fall into three broad categories. First, the companies have a duty to ensure that their products are safe. Uh, that means things like testing these models iteratively and publicly to ensure that the results they return in high-risk areas like biotechnology or cybersecurity are safe. Second, uh, the companies have a responsibility to ensure that their products are secure, uh, making sure that there are cybersecurity standards, independent third-party testing, public disclosure of that testing, to make sure that the models themselves are safe from external threats or insider threats. And then third, the companies have a duty to ensure that their products gain the trust of people around the world. And so we need a way for viewers, consumers, to ascertain whether uh, audio content or visual content is AI generated or not, uh, whether it is authentic or not. And that's what these commitments do. Would the United States government fund some of these types of safety tests conducted by those companies? I think the whole governance structure is emerging. The United States government has a huge interest in ensuring uh, that these companies, these models, their products are safe, are secure, and are trustworthy. And we look forward to partnering with these companies for the long haul over time to do that. And of course, that could, that could certainly include a uh, financial partnership. Given those commitments are voluntary and given those companies are competitors, aren't those commitments such as information sharing more um, symbolic than substantive? Well, we see plenty of examples of companies that are competitors in a market uh, actually cooperating significantly to ensure that their products are widely viewed uh, as safe by consumers. So we see it in the automotive industry, we see it in the airline industry, we see it in cybersecurity information sharing across uh, different competitors in industries. So there's, there's significant precedent for information sharing among competitors actually being a path towards greater market success. The White House has listed cancer prevention and uh, mitigating climate change as two of the areas that it would like AI companies to focus their efforts. Can you talk about U.S. competition with China on AI? Is it the, this administration's priority? So we would expect the Chinese approach to artificial intelligence to look very much like uh, the PRC's approach to other areas of technology. Uh, generally uh, top-down, generally uh, not focused on uh, open expression, not focused on open access to information. And these AI systems, by their very definition, uh, require that sort of openness and that sort of access to large data sets and information. Uh, that said, we think there's a huge area of potential collaboration between the United States and the PRC to solve shared global challenges. Something like 15% of the UN's sustainable development goals are currently on track. Uh, if we are gonna succeed in areas like climate research or agricultural productivity or medical diagnostics and therapeutics, we need collaboration 
uh, among the widest possible set of countries and the application of emerging technologies like AI. Some industry experts have been warned that the Chinese government is spending three times as much as the U.S. government is to become the world's AI leader, citing the Chinese military is investing heavily uh, in AI-enabled equipment. Can you talk about China's ambition on AI? Is the U.S. keeping up with the competition? So we certainly track things like uh, R&D and investment dollars, uh, but I would, I would make the point that those are inputs, not outputs. Uh, and I don't think it's any accident that the leading companies in AI research are American companies. Uh, our innovation ecosystem, supported by foundational research and immigration policy that attracts the world's best talent, tax and regulatory policies that encourage business creation and growth, these are an enormous wellspring of, uh, of our strength and, and influence uh, economically and politically around the world. So I did a little bit experiment on some of the popular AI platforms such as Chat GPT. I put in the Mandarin questions such as what is the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre? Guess what? It gave me an answer that is heavily censored by the Chinese government. So now my question for you, China has finalized its laws governing generative, generative AI services like Chat GPT. What are your thoughts on those rules that will come in effect on August 18th? So again, I think that the development of these systems actually requires uh, a foundation of openness, uh, of interoperability, of reliability, of data. Uh, and an authoritarian top-down approach that controls the flow of information over time will undermine uh, a government's ability, a company's ability to sustain an innovative edge in AI. I'm just curious, among those commitments made by the AI leading AI companies, how often and how detailed would those companies be required to report on um, their systems um, capabilities and limitations? Yes, we're in the process right now of working with the companies to come up with the accountability mechanisms and the reporting structure. Uh, but again, I would emphasize these companies have a huge interest reputationally uh, in living up to these commitments in a full and transparent fashion. And we look forward to working closely with them to do exactly that on behalf of consumers all around the world. So it's not yet finalized about the timeline and the frequency. This is going to be uh, an emerging uh, governance structure. This is a first step, uh, but it's going to continue and, and continue to get more uh, robust over time. The White House also say it has worked with at least 20 countries uh, to establish a strong international framework to govern the development and use of AI. Can you talk about the commitments made by other countries and this type of uh, efforts? Well, one of the wonderful things about the way that generative AI has captured popular imaginations around the world is that we see governments all around the world putting an immense amount of focus and energy on this issue. And so, yes, uh, we have been in regular dialogue with at least 20 uh, of our allies and partners around the world on multilateralizing these voluntary commitments as broadly as possible. We look forward to working uh, through the Hiroshima AI process under uh, Japanese leadership in the G7. We look forward to collaborating with the UK uh, on their AI Global Safety Summit uh, this fall. We look forward to working through the US-EU Trade and Technology Council. We look forward to working at the United Nations broadly on, on issues of AI for good. This is a global set of opportunities and a global set of challenges. Have these com um, countries committed to share their information content in different languages? We don't comment specifically on uh, diplomacy that is underway, but we are in the midst of robust dialogues with each of these countries to get as much participation and as much alignment as we possibly can. Any final thoughts about the risks? Can AI uh, models be used to develop bioweapons can AI wipe out humanity? 
My experience has been that risk and return really are correlated in life and in financial markets. So there's huge uh, reward and promise in these technologies. And of course, at the same time, they bring with them significant risk. So we need to maintain our North Star, our focus on that innovative edge and all of the promise that these technologies bring. And at the same time, it's our responsibility as governments and as responsible companies leading in this space to put the guardrails in place to mitigate those risks. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for talking to me. Please to be with you, thank you.